all for coming out uh, tonight for our public hearing. Uh, before I take a moment to open the public hearing, I'd like you all to rise with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Notice of public hearing, May 6, 2019, at 7 p.m. In accordance with the town charter requirements, the Board of Finance will hold a public hearing on the proposed budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 at 7 o'clock p.m. Monday, May 6, 2019, in the Plainfield Town Hall. All electors of the town and eligible property owners who wish to be heard will be allowed to do so at the hearing. Board of Finance, Thomas J. Sinkowitz, Chairman. So with that said, I now open the public hearing. Uh, just a couple uh, notes uh, before we have our first person. Uh, the process for this tonight, um, which is pretty much as we would do at any other Board of Finance meeting, the only difference now is having uh, the mic right there, which perhaps is something we'll consider uh, in the future as well. But um, the key is, is you need to uh, come up from your seat, up to the mic, uh, say your name and your address, uh, please speak loudly if you can. Obviously, the mic's there if you can't. Uh, but please speak so everybody, not just us up here, but everybody in the audience can hear your uh, comments or concerns, anything like that. Uh, I am going to be putting a limit on it because I want to ensure that everybody here, if everybody here in fact has a comment and wishes to participate, um, everybody needs a first round of at least three minutes. So each person will have three minutes in the beginning. Um, so if you have, let's say, an epiphany uh, during this hearing and you all of a sudden would like to uh, comment or follow up on something, that's perfectly fine. Uh, however, you need to wait for the second calling, which I will indicate again after I've made sure everybody who wanted a first try has gone up. Then I I will put out the motion for a second uh, attempt if there's anybody who would like to come up. Might not necessarily be that, but again, just make sure that you're letting uh, others be heard. I know we have some who uh, sometimes will participate during public comment five times, so we need to make sure that everybody at least gets one chance. Uh, remember that there's no side conversations, uh, cheering, applause, booing, all that type of thing. Uh, please be courteous and kind to anybody who's up at the mic, and also for those of us who are up here uh, speaking, uh, if need be, and please make sure that you're directing everything up here to me and the Board of Finance. Uh, and of course, if there is anybody who has something to add or would like to answer or throw something in, uh, I will recognize them, but basically, unless you're recognized by me, the only person participating is the person at the mic. So obviously, no side comments or side conversations popping up out of the audience. Again, be courteous and kind to those who are at the mic. So, with that said, I will open the floor for our public hearing. You can uh, raise your hand and I will call on you. You can come up. <coughs> yes, sir. Good evening, Kevin Cunningham, 405, Mr. Ponder Road. Uh, just one question on page 11 of the uh, documentation. Do you have teacher pension state mandate is still says zero? Everything that I've read before, it still says that the governor is still proposing, uh, and also the legislature is still proposing $80,868 to be paid by the town of Plainfield. So I'm asking why this still shows a zero. Um, well, we are... Speak up, please. There it is. Michael. I'd like to uh, defer to our superintendent on that question. Okay. So, so they have not voted on it yet, but the requirement is if there is a uh, an assessed value, which we right now heard about $88,000, that is something that just has to be brought into the Board of Education's budget. They have to accommodate it. So the bottom line is the number that's being recommended. If a cost of $88,000 comes in and that's the appropriation that has been made, that $88,000 falls within and has to be absorbed within the existing budget. So we don't add it because it's not voted in at this time. 
but the public is protected by the fact that that $88,000 is assessed against the school district and it is absorbed within the appropriation that you allow for. So with everything that I've heard, why would you not put it in now though? I mean, this is just like close funds, is that correct? Is it an anticipated tax or, or, or what you're gonna be getting in? Just to follow up, if you add it in and it doesn't come in, the public then would be giving us $88,000 to spend that we have no need for and we, you cannot take the appropriation back. It is safer for the public to give the award and the award that was asked for is actually um, higher than the board actually built. They built a budget that was about $53,000 less, but because of an MBR requirement. So there is sufficient funds right now to cover that. And it wouldn't make sense for the public to vote in a higher amount when it's not voted by the legislature yet. Understood, except that if the 88,000 does get approved by the state of Connecticut, then you have to figure out where in your budget you're going to pick 88,000 from. We will do that. Okay. <laughs> Other participants for the public hearing? Yes. Uh, Gabriel, 20 Dory, and actually I have uh, two things. Uh, one, I'll keep it brief because I've got three minutes. It doesn't seem like now is a good time to even be voting on a budget because we have no state budget. We don't know what's going to happen. We remember two years ago. Where letters went out saying, please, could you pay your property taxes in advance? That would be appreciated. Really bad, but I would say we should really just vote no and wait to see how that shakes out. But I do have a question. The town's legal budget has gone up uh, $10,000 uh, in this one. I'm kind of wondering um, how did that happen and why? Because I, I've looked online. Most of the town's litigation has to do with tax uh, issues and appeals. They might know, or is this just a number we pulled out of the air, another 10 grand? No, that's a number that we have looked at and based on past attorney fees for the year and what is still coming up and what is still pending that needs attorney legal fees. We increased it by that to make sure that we are covered and don't have to do a line item transfer. So there's extra litigation? There is litigation still going on that's been going on for quite a, a couple of years. Okay, I, I know I won't ask because I know you guys can't comment, but I just I just wanted to know. Next participant. Any other participants? 
Well, I might as well ask him. RK, 10 Jackson Road. As far as the figure for the solar that he just brought up, I thought we were told that we wouldn't know that until it was all in operation. How do we come up with numbers all of a sudden? That's what I was told. We were told that. Well, there's there's a, uh, the whole purpose of putting solar panels is, is to be energy efficient and cost efficient. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, there, there are savings. And um, in typical solar panel costs usually uh, decrease within municipalities throughout the state of Connecticut by 25 to 30 percent. And we're allocating that appropriation for this fiscal year based on trends throughout. So, so it changed during this budget process? Because at the beginning of it, we weren't going to know this figure until after it was all done, the project was all done. Then we get the, this is what I was told. So all of a sudden you have a number of savings and they're not even complete. So I don't understand. Well, I, I don't know who told you uh, that, that the original savings would be unknown, but um, did a little bit of research and- uh, It would be known once it was complete. That's what we were told. So I don't know. Okay. Other participants? Budget comes up $14 million instead of $15 million, like you said. 
conscious of having to just what you said. Are you talking about the, are we talking specifically about? The whole budget, you said it was going to be $15 million. He says it's going to be $14 million. Right? He said, how do you put the cat before the hus? You're doing the same thing now. Well, actually, if you turn to, I believe it's page 13, um, you'll see that CCM uh, published the conference committee's counter proposal to the governor's number for our ECS number. And that number came out to 15.04 million. Um, that's a lot closer to the 15.1 million that we had been anticipating. So now with the presentation of new information, um, we feel more comfortable with our 15.1 number because there are people in Hartford advocating for a higher number in our ECS grant. More, larger number than what we had initially anticipated with the governor's number. Um, so um, we feel confident holding strong in our 15.1 numbers. So the burden of uncertainty doesn't have to be hit with the taxpayer. So you're telling me you're going to get $15 million for the state of Connecticut? Um, yes or no? Well, what we're not saying maybe this and maybe that. Well, I get that every time I come in here. You know, what, right? Unfortunately, nobody knows. Because he ain't got the budget yet, has he? Well, we, we're... Uh, you're estimating again. Well, yeah, that's right. kind of what we do. So, I'm like my wife. You know, she says, I don't overestimate, I can't underestimate. So if you only get $14 million, right, when the budget comes in, and I stand up here and ask you why, what are you going to tell me? I'm going to tell you that we are prepared to absorb the cuts within the Board of Education, and the town's budget will not be affected because we are prepared fiscally to not be, not meet the $15.1 million budget. Very good. Now, you got, you just said you got $20,000 cut on a light bill right here. We're projecting, yeah. Projecting, right? But yet you asked for a million increase. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Public hearing? Yes. Joe said 273 Playfield Pike. So, what you're telling me is that you're ready to absorb 600 plus thousand dollars if the money doesn't come through. So, does that mean we're over budgeted by 600 plus thousand if you can just cut it like that? Well, it's, it's not us. That's Where, where's the money going to come from if it doesn't come through? Well, it, like I said, it, it's not the town side that's going to absorb the cut. It's the Board of Education. So then they're over budget. Somebody's over budget. That's all I'm saying. Correct? Uh, correct? Yes or no? Uh, it's a no. yes or no question. No, it's not correct. Because then you can't absorb the money. You can't absorb that much in cuts. Well, um, I, I can defer to it's, that. It's an easy question. Yes or no? I, I can. I, give me a chance. You to can answer. double talk me uh, or whatever you want to do, but it's a yes or no question. Uh, Apparently, you don't have the answer. Well, I can't. Can you let me respond? I, I can. Oh, uh, Kent, is there anything that you could shed any light on in regards to Joe's question? We've provided a budget. At number one, we've identified every cost with the backdrop, with the backdrop of the detail. There's nothing that is not accounted for. If the state cuts the money, we will have to do what we have an obligation to do, which is to cut the budget. And the board will consider that this Wednesday when they're meeting. What are the contingency plans? so that we will have to make that up. As you see from the CCM, they're looking at 114,000 in a cut, not 600,000. So if anyone wants the justification of what we are purchasing and what we need to purchase, it's in here. And the state requires that we need to spend 35 million 980, or we will get a $1.1 million penalty. If you don't, that we've gone to the public many times now to explain, including a letter from the commissioner stating, if you don't award 35 million 980, then the town has to absorb a $1.1 million in the taxpayer or fund balance. To avoid that, we met the obligation of $35 million, and the board will consider whatever is necessary. We did it in the past, we were faithful in the past, we'll be faithful in the future. There's nothing in here that is not warranted, needed, or valuable. 
they will have to cut programs that people would like to see. It's a necessary part of the budgeting right now. I don't believe the government's budget will prevail because the majority who are with the governor are now advocating against that budget. If the same party is advocating for a higher award per district. Okay, thank you, Ken. Uh, Others participating in the public hearing? <coughs> Trav Harmon from South Connecticut. Can you elaborate? So if we do not put in our budget 600 k we will lose 1.1 million, correct? Not, not exactly. If you don't have a budget of 35 million 380377 before this year closes out, you will lose 1.1 million no matter what you do next year. So it is not coming back. So we have to meet that minimum budget requirement yeah, or it's gone on top of the 600,000 we're losing. That is, that is correct. And then if you don't sustain it the next year, you will lose another million dollars this following year. So if we do not put in the six minimum, 600K minimum now, we'll lose an estimated 1.7 million next year, give or take. It's two years away. It doesn't happen in August. A year later, it's just money gone. gone. That's not coming back. Yeah, it's money that. Thank you. Next, yes. Sue Hall, Sunday Village. I have a question on page seven on your elections. There was a change in the charter this year. Um, that was changed, changed wording that we might be able to eliminate polling stations in the future. Are you planning on doing that? And if you are, how come it does not show a reduction? Would you like to answer that? Yeah, that's why we to defer to Okay, so what we did in the charter is that prepared us to go ahead and change, but before you change polling stations, you have to change polling districts. So it's something that you can't, we just cannot come out and say, okay, we're gonna close the polling stations. We have to change the districts and then cut down the polling stations. And right now we have to be prepared to go into the November election and the referendum, uh, the, the budget meeting that we're having and be able to have the correct amount of dollars in there. We don't know how long it will take to change the districts and then be able to change the polling stations. That's why we have not decreased that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, seeing that there's nobody else, uh, I will now open it to the second round. If you spoke before and you have something you would like to add, follow up. Is there anybody who would like to do that? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Is there somebody over here? Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I'm Dan Real, 20 Doherty Ave. I, I had one of those epiphanies you were talking about earlier, and uh, I know a guy. Uh, who is in solar and does a lot of solar sales and installation. Um, and I have a question which is going to lead to some analysis. Are, do, are these solar panels bought or leased? Um, so the solar panels, what they do is that is a 20-year program. So, we don't, so we're leasing them. We don't pay anything for the solar panels at all. They, they so we are them. leasing them. If you want to call it a lease, yes. Okay, so they handle all the calculations and the tax credits and all that fun stuff, and they will also pay to remove them if we have to like replace roofs or anything like that? Yes. Excellent. I hope it works. I hope I was wrong about this idea, but I think it may work out and everything will be awesome. But uh, otherwise, again, I would reiterate from earlier that you, know, you guys work hard on the budget. I understand that. Some of us aren't the best you know, or easiest to deal with, but uh, at the end of the day, I think if we don't have realistic numbers and the state doesn't have any numbers, we should say, hey, this is all pretend. 
We just live in the land of make believe, and we shouldn't make a decision until the state can say, here's what we got. But I think we're just doing ourselves a disservice if we do otherwise. Thank you. Thank you. something will cover it. Right. And if I were to use it, it wouldn't come to taxpayers because they're not going to ask the taxpayers for new doubles. So it would come out of the fund balance. Okay. When yeah. it's not used, then it just stays with us. We're not giving it back. It right. just I'm following. Yep. Okay. So my next question is, so when does the, you just stated um, the fund balance is says the starting number for July 1st has to be 35980 If the governor cuts $600,000 and that were approved, the law on ECS says only when ECS is cut from the state, that same amount can be cut in the appropriation of the towns who awarded it. That's how they protected the town. So that you don't give the money and then say, oh, we didn't have to. They allow you then to adjust. And that money just comes off of the 35980 It's right. not double. It well, just comes That money is all built into the taxes and the revenues that are coming in. So if you have a $600,000 shortfall, where are you going to absorb that? It has to be cut from actual programs and services that are budgeted for that year. And that's what the board is actually looking at, a contingency this Wednesday. In the event that that came forward, they want to look at what are the numbers that could be adjusted so that the $600,000, if required to be cut, would be cut. What programs would be cut? What services? Okay, thank you. I'll just um, add on that uh, too for those who are following along with the uh, Board of Finance meetings. We do have a special meeting tomorrow, and for those of you who might have seen the agenda already, one of the items on there is we already voted and approved for that 551, but the one uh, minor detail that we hadn't included in that approval was sending it to town meeting. Um, so again, what Naomi was just speaking of, that still is going to be going to town meeting. Uh, and so there is still, obviously, uh, the voice to be heard uh, from the townspeople about that. But that is something that we will have, again, another discussion about tomorrow. And then, again, we'll be making a motion to send it to town meeting. Questions? Yeah. Oh. Oh, which yeah, you'd you be third. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you would be second, good sir. Okay, again, back to the solar. Um, 
Are we projecting savings on all the buildings that they're going on for this coming year? Yeah, all installations that are to be. Can, can you tell me a total savings? Well, of all of them, uh, roughly twenty thousand eight hundred. That's it. Oh, it's a the, the, sa the savings on this project was supposed to be three million over the twenty year period. That's one hundred fifty thousand a year. And you're telling me we're only going to save twenty thousand. Well, Why aren't we projecting one hundred? Wait a minute, because they told me that more of the savings was going to be at the beginning of the project. We get more because the panels fade as they go, so we probably get more than one hundred fifty thousand this coming year. What? And you're only projecting twenty thousand. Our, our electricity budget for town hall uh, is seventy-one thousand. I don't know how we can. Oh, that's just for the town hall. No, that that's the electricity for buildings and grounds. So I'm, I'm citing a line item when I say electricity town hall. That's all the municipality. But um, I don't know how we can save one hundred fifty thousand on a seventy-one thousand dollar budget. It's just not. Well, that's always been on all our buildings for electricity. Um, that's yeah. That's well. This is. Maybe you can answer. Okay. So it's projected is three, three million over twenty years. Other, and I asked this question: Why do it if we're not going to save it? So, so that does not include the schools. That does not include WPCA. Well, that's what that I just is, asked. If they included all the buildings. So the town side and the board of ed side. Board of ed has their own utilities. Okay. So you're asking the town side. He's telling you yes. That's no, the I'm town asking side. on a budget. This is a budget for both, isn't it? Do you have savings on yours this year? We don't know to how to generate that savings yet. They have not installed at this point for us. Okay. We have nothing on our roof. So it is until they get installed. So it's just for this building and the rec center yes. then, right? Correct? And the police station. Right. Police station, please. That's installed? It will be by then. Okay. I didn't understand. I'm just no, trying I mean, to get it I, clear. I should have been more explicit when I said electricity town hall. I, I, I cited the line at it, but I didn't explain that that's just for the town side. Okay. Because it sounded a little no, short no, otherwise. I, I, my, my apologies. Uh, Gabriel, 20 Dory Ave. Uh, sorry for round three. I apologize. And before I say this, granted, this is nobody sitting here. This is your fault. You inherited this. But I have a question. Um, you may remember two years ago, there was some litigation involving a town charter. Very annoying litigation. In the end, day of trial, some people raised their right hands, walk in with a version of the charter. It was uh, apparently marked up by a dead guy five years ago, lost in desk drawer. And the court ruled that that particular version of the town charter was the real version of the town charter we're supposed to run with. Um, the problem, I started scratching my head with some um, the ballot questions, which were apparently all charter revision questions based on the version of the charter that is online. The annoying issue at hand which concerns this particular meeting was the process by which the budget would go to referendum or not, or in circles or whatever. I'm just bringing it up. I obviously don't expect an answer today. This is really a law school exam question, but if we have another 10 grand in a legal budget, you might want to have counsel sharpen their pencils and start to figure out whether it's the five-year-old dead guy marked up version of the charter or the one online that we're uh, running with. If it's the wrong one online, we want to get the right one actually online. I know some people seem confused. You, you, you sir, work here. I, I apologize for our mess this may create. You're a smart guy. I hope you do well. I think you're sharp. I think it'll work out excellently, but we're going to have to figure it out. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Going once? Twice? All right. Uh, at this time, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I have a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of closing the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries. Our public hearing is closed. Thank you all for coming.